By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with a brand new deck. It's called Imprisoned Dreams and it's based on Underworld Dreams. And I am playing against Yoop and he is playing with a Red Spice deck. Now before we are going to the actual match, I'm first going to explain the decks give you some deck deck and some background now if you'd like to go straight to the games themselves you can do so by looking at the description below and clicking on the timestamp and you can go directly to the games for now i'm going to start by discussing the decks this is the deck that i am playing with today and i'm calling it imprisoned dreams and it revolves all around this card underworld dreams and i was lucky enough to find four of these italian copies and it's really nice enchantment it's very cool to kind of brew around it and it's for three black it's an enchantment from legends and it reads underworld dreams does one damage to opponent for each card he or she draws now i kind of wanted to make a budget build with a play set of these um, so as you can see all the cards here are well most of the cards are reprints and they're pretty affordable um, actually to get so if you're if you're liking this deck uh, if you like the games that you're about to see and you think okay maybe I want to build this myself it's actually pretty affordable especially for considering it's an old-school uh, deck so underworld dreams I've combined it with parfait and parfait kind of refers to three artifact cards and those artifacts are relic barrier howling mine and winter orb and there's something unique about howling mine and winter orb because when you tap them the artifacts get deactivated so what you can do in this case you see the howling mine is tapped what it then does is it no longer works that means that during next draw phase you only draw one card so what you can do is after your draw step you draw two cards from your own howling mine and then you use your relic barrier to tap your howling mine and that means that your opponent only gets to draw one card now this trick also works with the wind orb and the wind orb reads a player may not untap more than one land during the untap phase of each of his or her turns now, after the untap phase of my opponent, I can tap the Winter Orb. And that means that when it's my turn to untap, I get to untap all my lands because the Winter Orb doesn't work at that moment. So with the Relic Barrier, I can make the Howling Mine and the Winter Orb one-sided. Now, the interesting thing here is that there are certain situations in the game where I want my opponent to draw cards. So that means I'm not going to deactivate the Howling Mine. I'm not going to tap it. But I only want to do this when I have my opponent in a lock. And um, this deck kind of has a soft lock with Winter Orb. So Winter Orb is very important in this deck. Now I'm playing with a few cards to make sure that the Winter Orb works better than it usually would. So I'm playing with Icy Manipulator. The interesting thing here is that Icy Manipulator can also tap lands. So with Winter Orb, my opponent only gets to untap one land. I am going to tap that land with the Icy Manipulator. What I can also do with the Icy Manipulator is tap any artifacts that my opponent may have. The difficult thing with black is dealing with artifacts. Icy Manipulator allows me to kind of deal with them. If there's a Mana Vault, a Soul Ring, or a Mox, I can also use my Icy Manipulator to tap those. Another important thing is here is that I'm playing Creatureless. So I'm playing with Maze of Ifs, but also with Paralyzes. The interesting thing, thing here is that Paralyze taps the creature the moment you cast it. So even when the creature is untapped, it gets tapped. And during the upkeep, your opponent may spend four mana. But it's very hard for my opponent to get four mana when I have a Winter Orb out. So that Winter Orb is really important in my deck. And the third card is a card we've discussed earlier, the Relic Barrier. Now, Relic Barrier is not only interesting to tap the Winter Orb, it's also a way to deal with artifacts, just like the Icy. So Relic Barrier, again, can tap the mana artifacts that my opponent may have. And in old school, uh, there are a lot of mana artifacts. So I think the Relic Barrier is really important in this deck now um obviously the nice thing here with with this build is that i'm hoping to have a turn one swamp a dark ritual and then an underworld dreams so that i can put pressure on my opponent from the start so i'm curious i hope uh, this deck is going uh to work obviously i haven't talked for instance about the four sinkholes in this deck they are also very important and Another nice detail here to mention is that the sideboard is full of creatures. So I'm playing no creatures main board, but the sideboard is full of them. So I'm of course hoping that maybe my opponent is going to board out all their creature hate because they don't see any creatures in the first game or the second game. And then the third game, if it's necessary, I'll board in all my creatures and hopefully 
uh, surprise my opponent. Okay, so this is my deck, Imprisoned Dreams. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And now let's take a look at Yoop's deck, Spice Red. My opponent, Yoop, is playing with a mono red deck, and I've called it Red Spice. And I don't have a deck list, unfortunately, but I kind of know this opponent. I know, I know this deck a little bit. It's been on the channel as well. He makes a few changes, but I know that he loves big red creatures. So he's playing with a Shivan Dragon. He's playing with a Rock Hydra. Uh, I believe he's also playing with the Two-Headed Giant. Uh, so really, really cool and flavorful creatures. And maybe the creature that I like the most, the Granite Gargoyle. And um, if you're wondering why, I really advise you to take a moment to read the flavor text. So maybe you can pause the video right now and read the flavor text, or maybe get back to it later. It's, it's really fantastic, and it's one of the reasons why I really like this card. Now, besides these really nice creatures, his deck also runs four lightning bolts and four chain lightnings, and I believe also a fireball, maybe even two fireballs, I'm not sure. So he, he's packed with some direct damage, he's packed with some big creatures so i think that i need to find a way to deal with this and i hope that he cannot accelerate with any mana rocks because if he can i could get into some serious trouble especially combined with the direct damage because especially the direct damage component um, there's not a lot that i can do against this i think what works in my advantage is that he's playing mono red so he probably doesn't have a way to deal with um, the underworld dream since it's an enchantment I mean, he's probably playing with the Chaos Orb, so it does mean that he has one solution. But, I mean, that's only one Chaos Orb versus four Underworld Dreams. So I think that's going to work in my um, advantage. Well, this is uh, the deck that my opponent is playing with, or, well, everything I know about my opponent's deck. Let's now quickly go to the games and, uh, and see how this is going to turn out. Game number one, and... Yoop is a player on the left, now playing the basic mountain. I'm on the right with my Imprisoned Dreams deck. There's the second mountain. And let's see, a double swamp into a relic barrier. And there's a desert by Yoop, and he's playing the Granite Gargoyle, the 2-2 Flyer. And I'm playing a Maze of If, so I'll be able to kind of stop that. And now I have that combo on the battlefield. Uh, that I talked about in the introduction of this video, the Winter Orb and Relic Barrier. There you see me tap the Winter Orb, and that means that I get to untap all my lands. Um, playing a Strip Mine, stripping away one of the mountains, and in response, there is a Shatter on one Winter Orb, and I imme immediately play a second Winter Orb. So that's not really going to help my opponent much. And I'm probably looking for my Underworld Dreams here. Not finding it, playing a sinkhole, getting rid of another mountain. And there's that attack again, using the Maze of If, and tapping everything here. Playing another Swamp, having four Swamps now and a Maze of If. We're both still on 20 life. And there is a Howling Mine, so hopefully a Howling Mine can help me to get my Underworld Dreams and kind of get this game going. So far I have control, and as you can see, my opponent now kind of has mana issues with that Winter Orb in combination with the Strip Mine and the um, Sinkhole. And, ooh, interesting, a Dark Ritual. So I have four mana now, playing an Icy Manipulator, passing turn, so that means that I now get to tap both artifacts. The problem, of course, is that I only have one mace here, so I just take full damage, going to 16, and there's a Chain Lightning, going to 13 here. So, Yoop is taking every chance that he gets, and there's that Paralyze, and here you kind of see that interaction between Paralyze and Winter Orb, and also tapping another land, with the icy manipulator so it's it's kind of looking uh, very difficult now for my opponent because i kind of have that lock going uh, where my opponent doesn't have any mana anymore because of the icy i can untap the land that he's going to untap in his untap phase so even before his draw phase his lands are tapped but I'm still looking for that Underworld Dreams because I haven't dealt a single damage yet. And there's another Paralyze on the other gargo Gargoyle. 
And it looks like I have a total lock now. And look at that. So I've got two IC manipulators. And I've got two relic barriers as well. So I get to draw three cards and my opponent only gets to draw one card and he's out of mana as well. And there's another sinkhole. So this is pretty brutal. Tapping that land that he untaps. Now he's finding a land, using it. This is actually pretty good. Using it to cast a soul ring. That means that he has two mana. And playing another swamp. Interesting here. Playing that warp artifact on the soul ring. So that's my other kind of way to deal damage to my opponent is with those warp artifacts. So that means that he now gets one damage during the upkeep. But I have to choose now what I want to tap. Choosing to tap the mountain. And that means that he has three mana now, which is quite a lot. So maybe he can do something with this. And as you can see, I let my opponent draw two because I want to untap my I want to tap my winter orb so that it can untap my lance again. So there's kind of an opening here, and I am on 10 life. And there's that stone rain on Maze of If. So it's really important now that I kind of make sure that I keep his mana low. And let's see, paying six mana here. Ooh, this is brutal, a mind twist. And that means he only gets to keep one card and I've kept three mana open, so I probably have plans with those mana. Playing another Relic Barrier. And that means I have enough Relic Barriers to tap my both of my Winter Orbs and both of my Howling Mines. So you can kind of see Parfait here in full swing. And I've got complete control and I'm really slowly killing my opponent. This is really a prison deck situation here. But still no Underworld Dreams, which is kind of odd because I'm drawing three cards per turn. Let's see if I can find it now. I am dealing some damage with the Warp Artifact. And passing turn. Okay, I believe that my opponent says said, you know what, I've seen enough. Uh, let's go to game <laughs> number two. I apologize, Hoop. You've got a great deck with great creatures, uh, but I had you in a lock. So let's continue to game number two and, and see what's going to happen there. Game number two. So I really had a nice lock on that first game, but no Underworld Dreams. So... That was, I mean, I, I wasn't 10 life. And it looks like we're both taking a mulligan here. And let's see. I still I still think if my if my opponent is going to to have a good and a quick start, he's, he'll probably be able to to win against my deck. So I'm not really that um confident here and there is a soaring turn one by my opponent I don't want to see that I don't want to see him accelerate because I need some time to get my pieces on the board here again finding an early strip mine so that's good news for me and he's not playing a granite gargoyle so that's not a good thing but now he has four mana with five he can play a giant there's a relic barrier so at least a way to deal with the soul ring and that's going to hopefully set him back a little bit. And playing a sinkhole. So again, I'm kind of doing that mana plan here. And look at that, a shatter. So that means that I cannot use my relic barrier. Oh, and he's playing my game now. Playing a stone rain on my swamp. And I'm playing... Oh, and there's a lightning bolt. But he's losing his Sheevan dragon. And he could almost play out the Sheevan. But look at that, he's stop decking the 4-4... Two-headed giant, beautiful, beautiful card. And I'm playing a, no, I'm not playing a Winter Orb, or am I playing a Winter Orb? I'm playing a Howling Mine instead. Probably feel like I need to find a solution for the giant, but obviously this means that my opponent, oh, and look at that, this is brutal. Well done, Yoop. So he's drawing two cards and then playing a Shatter on my Howling Mine. So that basically means that I 
lose a card and I've kind of gave him a card so it's double disadvantage I have played my first underworld dreams though but I don't think it's gonna help me I need a maze of if to stop the giant and I'm on two life now and there's a fireball and that's game wow that went extremely fast so this kind of shows what can happen when my opponent can accelerate so wow it's 1-1 one, one. and let's quickly go to game number three game number three so it's 1-1 one, one. and wow i mean that game really hurt i was only able to deal one damage and i had zero control so let's see if i can win this match i don't feel very secure at the moment and look at that a mox ruby turn one again i'm finding some early land removal so that's that's working Uh, playing a third swamp here playing the underworld dreams and that means the first damage and as you can see Yoop still kept his dice on 19 so he doesn't have actually have to change anything so he's on 19 now playing a rock hydra for one and that's pretty cool he probably knows my deck by now and he's like i'm just gonna play a creature as fast as i can and there is a paralyze and followed up by a demonic tutor let's see now obviously the combination paralyzed maze of if isn't a great one and i wonder what i'm going to look up now at least Yoop doesn't have enough mana to untap the rock hydra next turn although it's just a one one it's still damage and remember my deck is going really slow so i just want to minimize the damage as soon as i can And there he goes. Oh, this is an interesting card. Oh, I forgot the name. It's a card from Legends. You can pay four or not, and, and then you take the top card of your library, I think. Oh, pay two, and put the top card of your library under there. It's called Knowledge Vault. That's it. And you can sack the Knowledge Vault, and then you get all the cards under the Knowledge Vault, but you have to discard your hand. I think that's what it is. If I'm saying something wrong, uh, please help me out. I do know the art is absolutely stunning of this card. Um, but looking at the board state on my side, I've managed to play out a Relic Barrier and find a Howling Mine, so that's perfect for me here. And what I need now is a Winter Orb. And there is a Gargoyle by Yoop, and he is getting damage here um, from the Underworld Dreams. Paying four here, playing a Pestilence. And that means that I can kind of wipe the board next turn. And he's going to 15 now, obviously taking a damage every turn because of the Underworld Dreams. And he's attacking me using the Mace. And this is interesting, he's playing a Sheevan Dragon. I thought maybe he wouldn't do that. Um, because of the Pestilence, but he's doing it nonetheless. Using the Pestilence here because my opponent, Jupe, doesn't have the red mana to pump the Granite Gargoyle. That means that he loses its creatures, and we both take two damage here. And I'm playing a second Maze. So I think that Jupe really needs some Stone Rains now to deal with this. Going to 12 because of the Dreams. Sending back the dragon. And he's playing a second Sheevan Dragon. What a cool board state. So right now he has a Knowledge Vault and two Sheevan Dragons. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. I must admit, this prison deck kind of makes me feel like a douchebag. You know, I mean, tapping everything that he has, locking him and stuff. And he's playing really nice cards. And look at this, playing that Paralyzed again and in combination with that Winter Orb. And this is interesting here that I'm choosing to tap the Howling Mine because, of course, I have control, but with the Underworld Dreams on the table, maybe it would have been a good idea to um, let him draw two cards. And remember, I've had card advantage almost uh, this whole game and playing a second Underworld Dreams and there is a lightning bolt by my opponent here so i'm going to 15 but this is problems now for my opponent Jupe because he's taking two damage here going to nine that means that he has 
Oh, I also have, of course, have the pestilence that I can use. I wonder if I'm seeing that because the right play would be now to use pestilence at the end step. I'm actually not doing that here. Playing another swamp. Playing another relic barrier. So now I have that second relic barrier to kind of take control of my own winter orb. And my opponent here is going to seven. Things are looking good, but I'm not there yet. And he is playing with direct damage. Look at that. There's another direct damage card. Chain lightning going to 12. And now I'm using my pestilence at the end step, untapping, and actually I can kill him now. I believe this is game. But I decide to first draw two cards. Okay. Maybe I'm afraid of when I use my... Oh, look at that. Of when I use... I use my... This is what I'm trying to say. I'm using my sinkhole on his mountain first because I'm afraid that he may, may have a double bolt. And if he would have had a double bolt, he could have killed me because if, if I would do pestilence for six and he would basically die in response, he could play a double bolt because he had two red mana open. So I first wanted to play a sinkhole to remove his mountain and then he only had one red mana for a bolt and then activate the pestilence and if he would have played a bolt I probably wouldn't have killed him yet so it's it's quite complicated because in that case I would have given him another turn and let him take two damage from the underworld dreams and kill him on uh, in that way so you always have to keep that in the back of your mind when you're playing against direct damage players like okay they have lightning bolt maybe they have a double lightning bolt if I use my pestilence and take six damage from him i was on 11 i would have gone to uh five life and with the double bolt he could have killed me okay <laughs> that's it. that's why because you're probably thinking why is he not just using his pestilence straight uh straight away right away i should say uh and that's the reason uh for now thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and if you'd like to see more games you can click on one of the videos that are appearing right now on the screen you can also take a look on the channel we have more than 100 videos for you of old school magic uh, games but also some videos discussing certain topics we've got top 10 lists so there's quite a lot uh, for you on the channel to look at if you like this kind of content and you want to support me You can do so by subscribing to this channel by liking my video leaving comments and simply sharing the content that I make Thank you once again for watching Timmy talks the channel where we talk old-school magic and see you next time